following Four Aces production is for mature audiences only. Listener discretion is highly advised. Kicking back on this summer breeze. Officially in session. All right. How we doing, y'all? I'm going to make this episode short and sweet. Because we do got a Planet of Cold, Blues Rock and Cold, coming on tonight. In about 42 minutes. Cole's going to be bringing you some music from Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. So uh, be sure to keep an eye ear out for that. That's coming up next. Right now, I'm here to talk to you about some NFL playoff football. For those of you that keep track of my YouTube channel, K Double Double K or Double K K Double, um, y'all know that I've been posting instant reaction videos uh, to the NFL playoff games um, on the YouTube page. And the instant reactions are just kind of my feelings and thoughts right there, and telling you what happened in the game and like how everything kind of played out. Uh, in uh, those particular games. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. Like I said, K-Double, Double K, YouTube. Um, check me out there and, and listen in for more instant reaction videos for WWE pay-per-views, pay, uh, basketball games, um, NFL playoffs, Super Bowl, etc. So let's start out on Saturday with the Colts and Texans matchup, a matchup that I expected to be pretty darn good that turned out to be not necessarily as good as I thought it was going to be. Um, I thought it was going to be a close matchup with the with the Colts struggling to be able to um, find themselves in, in the lead or find themselves, you know, uh, on top of the game against a Texans defense that was by far like one of the top defenses in the league this year. But, alas... It was nothing like that. Andrew Luck came out on three strategic strikes is what I call them. Not 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 strategic uh, plays, not strategic drives, but strategic strikes. And scored three quick touchdowns, him and Marlon Mack dominating the, the Texans defense. And they uh and they were able to get a sizable lead of about twenty one nothing on the um uh, on the on the Texans, and the Texans just were never able to. They, I guess, even the Texans underestimated the Colts' defense because not even they were able to really get things going against that Colts' defense. The Colts' uh, defense dominated. Deshaun Watson and the boys uh, not re- making pretty much uh, making the, the or Hopkins 
a, a pretty much non-factor and and allowing uh their defensive stars to to make an impact on on the um on the young quarterback while their offensive line just kind of stymied Jadavion Clowney and J.J. Watt. They didn't really get to Andrew Luck as much as you would have expected them to. Um, I, quite, I quite enjoyed the game. It was back uh, towards the end. There was a little bit of a push by the, the Texans. They scored their first touchdown in the game, I think, late third quarter. And I thought, okay, well, well, we might have a game. And then just it never materialized. They were stopped a couple more times on a couple more drives when they had opportunities to uh, drive down the field and put some points on the board and, and make some noise, uh, and they just didn't. Like, real talk, they just didn't. Um, they they let their fans down at home to boot. I believe they were division champions, in this, and, and the Colts were a wild card, so this game took place in... Uh, it took place in Texas. So, yeah, like, I'm not saying that the Texans have anything to be ashamed of, but, my God, they definitely have nothing to be proud of uh, uh, on that game. And I said they made it look good late with a couple of long Deshaun Watson passes and, and, and a couple DeAndre Hopkins. Um, and a couple of catches, big big catches by DeAndre Hopkins that, that overall made them look good. But at the end of the day, nah, man. That there, there, there was. They were never any. Like, like uh, Dom says in uh, in Fast and Furious in the first one. You think you have me? You almost have me, man. You never had me, and that's and that's the real talk of of that particular game. Like the Colts think they were in the game at any point. Yeah, y'all were never in the game. Y'all never truly had a chance. So y'all, y'all could have could have just went home and still would have looked better than y'all looked on that day against the Colts. Uh, the other AFC matchup was the Chargers and the Ravens. Now that, my friends, was a game. That was a hell of a game. Um, the The Chargers, really, once again, it was another game that was kind of like, um, it was another game that was kind of like the Colts Texans game and the fact that they, early on it was a blowout. Like the Chargers pretty thoroughly dominated the Ravens early on. But the difference between the Ravens and the Texans is the Ravens were actually able to make like a slight comeback. They were actually able to come come back and make um make San Diego shiver. At one point uh, I believe final score was twenty three sixteen and San Diego thought they had it in the bag, but the Ravens had a chance coming late if it wasn't for a late san diego uh strip sack we would have got we would have had uh we could we might have had baltimore in that next round uh instead of instead of san diego or not san diego sorry los angeles uh instead of the chargers we might have we might have uh the Ravens, which who are a very good team, they said they plan on retaining Jim Harbaugh, which is cool. Um, but I want to say, uh, which is cool because I believe he is a good coach. Not Jim, but John Harbaugh. Uh, he he's a great coach, and I believe he did wonders with that team. He was smart to switch over to Lamar Jackson because uh, that kid's going to go somewhere. That kid's going plenty of places right now, and and that, and that's the key thing to it is that. He knew he was smart enough to make a change when it was necessary and be able to say, you know what, Joe, we love you. So now Joe Flacco's on the trading block. That's where that's where it leaves us now that, that Joe Flacco, the the one man who everybody thought was pretty much going to be a lifelong in, uh, raven, is now on the trading block and is probably going to land somewhere like Jacksonville, which actually guys don't, don't get, don't laugh too much about that because that's going to make Jacksonville a dangerous team next year with an actual offense and a defense. If that defense can manage to bounce back. Um, but that takes a look at, at the two AFC games from last week. Now I'm going to take a quick look at the AFC games from uh, this week coming up, which are going to be the chiefs and, um, the Colts, which should be very, very interesting because the Colts, the Chiefs really have no defense. 
Uh, that that's their weakest point. Even even with all their um, guys back, they still have a very weak defense. So uh, I and and especially uh, in their secondary. So I expect um, I expect Andrew Luck to go off. I expect Andrew Luck to to truly go off and find himself uh, some nice targets. Even though the weather will have a small effect, I don't think it'll have that much of an effect. He's played in weather like that before. Uh, next up. I don't know. I can't even like like I said. I, I think that I'm not having given picture. I'm just talking about their likelihoods here. Uh, you don't bet against Tom Brady. Just period. You don't bet against Tom Brady. Philip Rivers is 0 and 7 against Tom Brady. This may be that year because trust me, the Chargers definitely have a hell of a defense. So this may be that year where I'm wrong, but you never, you in my mind, you never bet against Brady. Brady's just too damn good. So to give official picks, I'm, I'm taking New England over uh, San Diego, and I'm taking Indianapolis over Kansas City for a rematch of the Deflate Gate game, uh, which was, I believe, this matchup will still will be in New England again, um, and Colts Patriots to see who's going to go to the Super Bowl, and who knows with the way that Colts defense playing, Andrew Luck may reach his first Super Bowl. Who knows? We'll see. All right. So on that note, I'm going to ahead and take a commercial break uh, or a promo break, and uh, come back with my lesson of the day. My lesson of the day. I'm just going to talk a little bit about my thoughts on this year's ass whooping handed out by the Clemson Tigers um, over to Alabama. Crimson Tide uh, with a freshman, a pure or a pure freshman quarterback. Kill me. This is Double K's Classroom right here on the Forest Presents Radio Network, Spreaker.com, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Hey, listener, Dutch here from Voice from the Underground, the podcast. My co-host and I want to invite you to check out our little corner of the podcast verse. At Voice from the Underground, we talk about all the crazy happening around us and try to make a little bit of sense out of the nonsense with little to no results. If the idea of hearing three semi-intelligent, outspoken nerds talk about politics, social issues, current events, sports, movies, pretty much anything that we decide to talk about because, well, it's our show, appeals to you, grab your shovel and come on down to the underground and then consult a qualified psychotherapist. Find us wherever you get your podcasts, just not where you buy your weed. Voice from the Underground. Tune in, folks. It's now time for Double K's Lesson of the Day. All right, y'all. So for those of you who tuned in, um, because I heard heard a lot of talk about the fact that this particular, um, this particular, sorry, this particular uh, national title game was not that popular, despite the fact that it took place in my backyard at Levi's Stadium. Um, it, It... it, it, I can see why there wasn't that many people interested, but it, but here's the thing about it: I don't think that the the reason why people weren't interested was because of the the what it turned out to be the eventual um, the eventual result. I think a lot of people thought Bama was going to run away with that game. I know I was one of those people. Well, I thought it was going to be a close game, but I thought Bama was going to win. I, I definitely thought it was going to be a close game but Bama was going to win. And I was completely wrong. The people who thought Bama was going to win were completely wrong. And everybody who thought Clemson was going to win was completely right. Clemson went out and kicked Bama's ass. At one point, uh, it was 16-14 Bama, and Clemson never looked back. I believe final score was like 41-16. This is one of the worst ass weapons I've ever seen a Nick Saban team take in my life. Trevor Lawrence, you are a god in the Clemson in the Clemson University area for for the rest of your life, for the way you dismantled Alabama. Y'all do that again next year. Y'all do something similar to that again next year and dismantle an Alabama uh, or something like that, and, and win another national title, and and you'll go down as a god. Period. Before you go to go to uh, the NFL, you will go down as a god, and will most likely be the number one pick in the draft. Trevor Lawrence, you have set yourself up for for nothing but stardom, and this kid is poised. Like I say, he's six 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 seven. Who he reminds me of, and, and uh, this is not in a negative way, but who he reminds me of is uh, Sunshine from Remember the Titans, KC, my boy from California. 
Just tall, stoic, got that look. Y'all remember that scene in Remember the Titans when, when, when he's like, let him through. Dips him, looks down at him like, what? What? Standing there, looking at him. That's Trevor Lawrence looking at Alabama. Bama's going to be back. Bama's going to be relevant again because Bama's never not relevant. Bama is entrenched. You can't mention college football without talking about Bama. Period. Part of Bama dating back to the days before days. Bama has always been the entrenched in college football and will always be. But for this one year, Bama got smacked down the level and got brought back to reality. Whoop, there goes gravity. So, all right. I just wanted to say that, get that out the way, because, like, that was an epic game. Um, hope y'all all enjoyed this, um, my thoughts on the national title game. We're going to listen to a couple more promos here from Man Brain and the podcast, after we just heard from VFU, and then I'm going to come back and talk to you about some NFC playoff picture right here on Double K's Classroom. Man Brain. You know you want it. You know you need it. Let me introduce you to our team of audio professionals, 100% committed to giving you the greatest extreme comedy podcast of all time. Um, what, what's, um, S-P-H, um, I'm so super cute. Send me your orgasmic release videos. You can get it rooting. You can get it tooting. You can get it doing doughies in your yeet. Mi nombre es este o yeti. And you just laugh at little Hank. I ain't gonna pretend I is fresh. But looks like you might like that. And most importantly, I'm Skulka. <laughs> Go to manbrainpodcast.com to get orally violated. Manbrain out. <laughs> So, what's up? Steve Finger Styles here, the host of The Podcast, spelled D-A, of course. Tune in each and every week to hear what pisses me off, what angers me, what I make fun of, and of course, my crazy rants. I also have incompetent co-hosts, cool guests, and a silent producer that sucks. So what more do you need from a podcast? You can listen on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and the Pod Bros Network. Peace. All right, and I'm back. So for the NFC, last week on Saturday, I believe, yes, it was Saturday, it was the Cowboys-Seahawks game, which came close to a mountain to one of the best uh, one of the best matchups of the entire playoffs. Back and forth and back and forth they went. As, uh, as I watched both the teams tried to establish domination the the Cowboys defense proved that it's up to the challenge of trying to lift this champ this team up to a championship level and Seattle proved that despite its loss it's not quite ready to go away and rightfully so um because the Seattle Seahawks are are still one of the better teams in the NFL and and can definitely make some noise come playoff time next year but this year the Cowboys were able uh were able to get get it done. Dak Prescott with a passing TD and a rushing TD. And the Seahawks just couldn't get it going when it counted. Like, really, the score being 24-22 made it seem a lot closer than it was. The Cowboys pretty much dominated the second half with the uh, Seahawks getting a late last touchdown. And, and though Russell Wilson looked good, it just wasn't enough for them to be able to beat the Cowboys. So the Cowboys move on to the next round. Uh, the On Sunday's game, that was the more interesting game because it had to kick what I call a kick her around the world from uh, Cody Parkey, uh, that poor guy. And, hey, let me say this right quick. Fuck y'all to anybody out there giving Cody Parkey death threats. All right, look, the man, it wasn't even like the man missed the field goal. He hit the upright. He just had bad luck and it didn't doink in. Instead, instead it doinked down and hit the, uh, whatchamacallit, 
It's happened to him a few times this year, yes. But does that mean you need to send the man and his wife death threats? Nah, man, come on, it's a game. If you lost money on it, you you took the risk when you put down the bet. So don't blame him because you lost your money. You took a game of fate, you took a chance, you took a game of chance, you played it, and you lost. It happens. There's literally a 50-50 chance that it can. So at the end of the day, um, end of the day, the Bears ended up losing. Their magical run comes to an end. Uh, Mr. Trubisky and the boys couldn't amass more than about 15 points. Uh, but they did put the Bears in position, like I said, to win the game late. But Parkey just missed, I believe it was like a 53 or 63 yarder, doinked it off the uh, off the right or left post and and off the crossbar and just wow. Wow, let me say that. Like I, I, I'm, I'm impressed with the Bears' effort. That defense is going to be amazing. Well, I don't know. I don't know because they did, they did just let go of Vic Fangio. He's going to be the new head coach of, um, God damn it, I forget who Denver. Uh, I believe he's going to be the new head coach for. So uh, Fangio's, Fangio's gone, and they hired somebody else in his place. I forget um, who again, but. Um, but I can tell you this. Let's see. Bears replaced family with uh, former Colts head coach. Um, who's this? Chuck Pagano. Chuck Pagano is, is heading back. He's going to be the uh, Bears' new defensive coordinator. So it should be pretty good next year with all the talent that they have on that team. But unfortunately, their run this year ends in the divisional round. Now, for as far as the um, the wild card, or the, sorry, their run ends in the wild card round. As for the divisional round, we have the Rams and the Cowboys, which should be an interesting matchup because the Rams have had issues stopping the run, and Ezekiel Elliott has been a beast so far this uh, postseason and and season. I believe is the league's leading rusher, and then. Um, you have Todd Gurley in that offense that are going to challenge Dallas's defense in a way that Seattle couldn't. So um, they're going to challenge them from every aspect of the game. So let, let's see. Um, you know, a, a name that I haven't heard brought up about this game much, much, and I think will be a huge factor, the X factor person will be Tyler Higby, the tight end for the Rams. If he can get a few catches in there, maybe about 80 to 100 yards, I believe the Rams can take this. If they slow down, if the Cowboys manage to slow down Gurley and stop Higby, I think that the Cowboys may pull off another upset and find themselves in the NFC Championship game. Against who? Well, that depends on who wins the game between the Eagles and the Saints, which it should have been the Eagles and the Saints last year when it was the... um, when it was the Vikings and the Saints in the second round, it should have been the Eagles and the Saints uh, if the Saints had been able to beat the Vikings and the Vikings didn't get the miracle fucking play that, that pr- uh, promoted them to the next to the next round. Uh, but but I think that it's going to be an epic game, but I think the Saints are going to be able to pull it off. Uh, so I think we're looking at official predictions. I think we're looking at the Saints and the Rams in the NFC uh, championship game. Uh, and I'll tell you who my winner is on that one later. Um, but I, I believe that yeah, those two those two guys are, are going to make it through through this upcoming weekend and into the championship round. But we shall see. We shall see. That's it here for me tonight, guys. Thank you guys for listening in. I do appreciate it. Uh, that's been my thoughts on the NFL playoffs. Be sure, like I said, check out my YouTube page, Double K K Double. Uh, check, continue to check us out here on Revolving Door episodes on Four Aces Presents Radio Network. You got your boy Cole coming up with Blues Rock and Cole in about 20 minutes. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And for as for me, you'll catch me next week. Uh, K Double's fifth period music class, where my artist of the week will be. Phil Collins, baby. The one and only Phil Collins. So be sure to tune in for that. And in two weeks, I'll be back with Double K's Classroom, where we will be talking Super Bowl. So we'll be previewing the Super Bowl, and it's basically playoff month for the Double K's uh, Classroom. And uh, we'll continue to also keep track of the Warriors and what's going on with Boogie's return date next week. That should be getting exciting. We got West Coast Bias coming back on uh, Sunday, the 20th of January, uh, to talk about NBA, NFL, playoffs, etc. So um, 
y'all continue to join us. We got, like I said, Blues Rock and Cold coming up next. We got Now versus Then coming up on the 20th. We got uh, Raw Impact Unleashed. Go back and listen to the first episode in a long time and almost two years of that show. Uh, Cole and your boy Cole and K-Double are joined by uh, John to talk Wrestle Kingdom, etc. So listen to that episode. Came on just before I, I came on the air. And then, like I said, listen to Cole, listen to MVT. Uh, now versus then, when they come on, we got a roundtable coming up this month. Guys, it's a big month for, for Aces. So keep listening in. This has been Double K. Y'all have a great night. Peace. <laughs>